did Dark Shadows come into my life? Well, I had an audition. I had been watching it for some reason, and I watched David Selby, and I thought, hmm, he's pretty good, he's pretty good, he looks pretty good, but I think I can do this, I think I can do this, okay. So I had an audition for the Christopher Berno part, and came in there, I aced it, I did great, but Dan Curtis just stopped everything, and he said, this guy sucks! He's horrible! Get him out of here! No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I wasn't that bad. He said, this guy should play the thing in the box. And I said to myself, I don't want to play some stupid thing in a box. I want a part. Turns out the thing in the box was Jeb Hawks, who grew very rapidly. And I made my debut as Jeb Hawks. But uh, 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 there was one thing. I was discovered, actually, in A Patriot for Me. Linda Otto was the casting director. She saw me. I was naked in this show. Just my back. Didn't show the front. For some reason, she thought that this was this struck her. This uh, moved her, seeing me naked on, on, on the stage. And uh, there was something about my eyes. And she said, this guy would be great for uh, some part in Dark Shadows. He's got the look, the look that we want. I think she was sitting with Jerry Windsor, and they took me in. That's how I was sort of singled out. And that was it. That was my debut on Dark Shadows. Yeah, the first TV show I ever did actually was, it was called an Under Five. Under Five means under five lines. It was on Guiding Light, which I later did as Dr. Justin Marler. And that was pretty terrifying. I think that was live on tape. No, I think that, that was live. Guiding Light was live, because I think that was two, two years before Shadows. And it didn't work again on TV. <laughs> and then Dark Shadows was live on tape. It was terrifying. It was absolutely terrifying. I remember my heart would pound so hard that I was afraid that the camera would, would pick up on it. And you, you could see all my various little costumes going like that. Because it would just go boom, 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 boom. You'd get dizzy. It was horrific, absolutely horrific. I got very good at, at using the, the prompter. I got excellent at that. That was your little life, your lifeline. One time I, I, I did, when I did the Guiding Light years later, I said, so where is the prompter? And they said, we don't have prompters anymore, Chris. I said, what? I said, we don't have prompters anymore. We don't use them anymore. If somebody forgets a line, they just go up. They just, we just do it over again. I said, <laughs> you're kidding. You don't have prompters. It was truly, I was in Saks Fifth Avenue getting my costume done. Anyway, um, thank God. Thank God. Uh, thank you, God, for prompters. There'd be one there, there'd be one there, and you just nail it. There'd be one right over the fellow actor's shoulder, and you just nail it. Just put all your concentration right there on the prompter. Thank God. And um, there were times, I remember one of my first scenes, I, I was recovering from the flu, and I was always, my runny nose and coughing and everything, and I, at one point it started bleeding. And I, I was doing this very intense scene, sort of trying to keep my, my blood from running out of my nose. Because I know if I stopped, you know, it cost $20,000 and you'd be fired and everything. I tried to snip it back in. It was, it was really, really um, not a nice experience. Um, what else? What else? What else? Ah, yes. Couldn't stop. So, you know, if you had a knife in somebody's neck and it was in a cane and you had the wrong cane and you could kill Elizabeth Ice and that happened. That happened. Um... Oh, everything happened, you know. Live on tape is, is terrifying. Actors will never know the terror of the old days. And I think it gives you character. Makes for good actors. Yep. Yeah, he, De Jeb Hawks was sort of the incarnate, evil incarnate. And, and how do you act that? How do you sort of bring that to life. So I had to tap into all the horrible things that I was or I thought I was or could be or read about or just all the, you know, just sort of bottle it all into one sort of charming human being. And I did that, I think, pretty well. 
And it was just, you know, luck. I had, I had no, I hadn't studied. I'd been to the American Academy. Um, I think my first month on the show, I was terrible. <laughs> I mean, if you look, I'm just, I'm just hanging on for dear life. I had no technique. You know, you're sort of learning on your feet. You're learning on, you know. And um, the more theatrical Jeb was allowed to be, I think the better I got. And I could just, you know, blow him, you know, right off the screen. But I, I would be very self-conscious when there was a little turn in the character and he, he got a little vulnerable. And you'd think, oh, you know, and it's the actor's dream to be vulnerable. But um, uh, the other thing was a lot, a lot easier, you know, being, being a villain, pure villainy. And when the vulnerability came in with, with Nancy Barrett, um, I felt very awkward. But I, th I think it, that was good, because he was awkward, because he was suddenly getting a heart. So it turned out, um, I hated the character at first. <coughs> I loved him. I loved his, his theatricality and his, uh, his chutzpah. He was like, yeah, you know, I don't know if you ever saw uh, Clockwork Orange, but the character of Alex, Malcolm McDowell, was sort of an extension of Jeb Hawks. I would have loved to have gone from Jeb Hawks to Alex and Clockwork Orange. I went, <laughs> and then Midnight Cowboy and The Graduate, and, you know, I've got my little list of dream parts. <coughs> so that was Jeb. And then there was Cyrus and John Yeager. I was, um, I was amazed at Nancy Barrett's um, incredible technique. She could do anything. She was a, an acting machine. She was a crying machine. She was just pretty remarkable and it turned out she was fun I had more fun with Nancy Barrett I had more giggles with Nancy Barrett than any other actor or actress on the show except for Mike Stroka so I love Nancy and um, damn we should work together again you know be great she still looks great I still look great Mr. Mike Stroka I miss you Mike I love you I love this guy Ah, it's hard. It's hard to talk about Mike because he was my best friend on the show. He sort of took me through the ropes. He took me out drinking at the Brittany. Told me what girls were available and what girls weren't. None of them were really available. <laughs> but that didn't stop us. And various other things, which I guess I shouldn't really mention, uh, me and Mike Stroka. But we, we would have fun together and do crazy things together. And I really miss him. I love him. I love him. And I, I don't think he ever really reached his potential as an actor. He could have been an incredible actor. And what a face. Incredible face. He could have slipped into that Al Pacino, De Niro um, time, you know. But usually that's, that's the way it goes. But yeah, that's Mike. Miss him.